Okay, so uh, if you have carefully gone through the notes on video lecture 6, then you would see that at the end, it was given that uh, there will be some clarification given in a new lecture called I mean, Appendix Lecture 6. So this is going to be very short, you know, I can uh, promise you to that. So now you can see in the blackboard that what we I have done, see I have drawn a curve here in the xy plane. So this is nothing but the graph of a function of this single variable x, y equal to f of x. So we have assumed that this is uh, I mean continuous and differentiable with the function f. Okay. So if that so happens, if that so happens, then what you can do, the length of the curve in the interval you can get through this formula. And if you recall, so what we did, we just uh, simply assume that this is point P1 and this is, uh, sorry, P0, P1, P2, etc. And uh, what we did, what we did, we just simply drew straight lines from each of those points to the next one in the sequence, right? And uh, after that, what we did, what we did, I mean, the length of the curve is going to be nothing like this, okay? So, so far, so good. Now, uh, what is happening out here? See, you may not get the curve in the two-dimensional plane as the graph of a function of one variable. So, uh, wh what is going to happen? If you have this situation, if you have this situation like this, if you have this situation like this, okay? So, here I can see that in this particular case, I can see that the x coordinates of all the points, x coordinates of all the points lying on the curve, lying on the curve, still lies in the interval a b, right? But still, in fact, uh, I mean, this curve, I mean, doesn't define a function because it cannot be considered as the graph of a function of a single variable x. Because what is happening out here? So if you draw a particular line like this, so then this line is going to intersect the I mean, curve at more than one point, right? So this strategy of finding out the length of the curve this way is not going to work here. So what we do? So if you recall, I mean, in my last lecture, in lecture six, I was trying to find out the length of a curve in this form, which is not the graph of a function of one variable. So what we did, we simply parameterize the curve through the variable t. So basically what we did, we considered an interval alpha beta in the real line. And then what we, we, uh, we, we, we did, we defined, I mean, two functions, this and right? In such a way that, in such a way that, at each point, each point on this curve, each point on this curve, we get a corresponding vector, which will be given by this, which will be given by this, which will be given by this. Is it okay with everybody? Fine. So now, you can see, that uh, this point, say, let me call this point as the initial point of this curve, right? Because I'm going to get this curve in the two-dimensional plane by moving like this, moving like this. If you recall the definition of space curve, so we were doing something like this. So instead of space curve, this is the plane curve. And uh, from, from the initial point, so eventually, say, suppose we have got the final point, Pn, okay? So then, obviously, what is going to happen if I draw a vector from the origin to the point P0, so this vector is simply going to be R alpha, and uh, similarly, this vector is going to be R beta, okay? So what confusion you can have? Like say, 
uh, in my last class, that is in lecture six, I was exactly treating the curve like this in such a way, in such a way that all the points lying on the curve will have their x coordinate lying in the interval a b. But that scenario may not happen always. So I'll, I'll come to that later on. But what I did, see, obviously, obviously, like uh, your uh, the, the 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 if if uh, if I had considered if I had considered, okay, it is still not the graph of a function of a single variable. Suppose it were the graph of a function of a single variable. Say, I mean y equal to f of x. So uh, then. In many situations, it is also written like this. Okay, so had I used this, so then what would have happened? What would have happened? Like uh, obviously, your a, if I consider x to be a function of the single variable t, so this is going to be x alpha. Similarly, b, it is going to be, I mean, x beta. Right now, again, again, if uh, I consider y to be, if I consider y to be a function of the single variable x, single variable x, then what is going to happen? I mean, y at the point a, I could have considered it like this. Okay, so in my last slide, what I have written, I have written y at a, and y at a is nothing but like say this length in that case. So what I had written, I think I had written it something like y of alpha, right? In fact, that is wrong because here this y of alpha, when we are considering it, it is a function of the single variable t in the interval alpha beta. Whereas in this particular case it was different. So this part is wrong. Okay. So this is where I want to clear up the confusion. Okay. Fine. So now, now let me come to the actual situation that you may come across. So what may so happen that your curve, your curve may look like this. Your curve may look like this. So then suppose that this is the your initial point on the curve, that is P0, and suppose this is the final point on the curve Pn. So then if I compare this situation with this one, so then I will have the corresponding points of P0 and Pn uh, on x-axis as A and B, right? Now you can see the situation here. What is happening here? There are many points, there are many points that lies that lies on the curve, that lies on the curve in such a way that the x coordinate of those points they do not lie in the interval A B. So this situation is entirely different from this. But let me guarantee you that whatever procedure we have adopted here, this is still going to work here. So simply what we are going to do, we are going to, I mean, take points like P1, uh, sorry, P1, P2, P3 on, on this curve, like P i minus 1, Pi, okay? And the earlier procedure that we followed, that all we adopted in my previous class, it is still going to be valid. As you can see, that still, this will be R alpha, and this point P0, in fact, is coordinate in terms of the parameter t if you use, so this is going to be uh, x alpha y alpha, so similarly pn it is going to have coordinate x beta y beta and again this one I can simply designate as r beta, is it okay? Fine, I hope the, I mean uh, confusion is completely clear by now, okay? And if, if you still have some confusion, I mean, 
you can ask me I mean, during your not doubt clearing I call my sessions with you as I an mean, interaction session okay so then I'll see you back in my interaction session thank you